Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and today we're going to do a supersized tasting of some super interesting wines that have changed the Italian wine scene forever. Yes, I'm talking about the super duper super Tuscans, and I'm going to open three of these icons today. Did I fit enough supers into that intro? Hmm, anyways, andiamo. In 1978, Decanter Magazine did a tasting of more than 30 Bordeaux blends from all around the world and the winner was a pretty unknown wine called Sassicaia that was first released only a few years earlier. This was the start of the Super Tuscan movement that developed because a few winemakers were fed up by the restrictive DOC regulations in Tuscany. The old world wine laws are great when it comes to protecting traditions, but they can stifle innovation and some winemakers decided that they don't care for the DOC label and made wine outside of the system. Some of them thought they could improve the quality of Chianti by leaving out the previously obligatory white grapes from the blend or just making pure Sangiovese. Others used international grape varieties such as Cabernet Sauvignon and Malot either to complement their autochthonous varieties or to make Bordeaux blends in Tuscany. It is a bit unclear who coined the term Super Tuscan. Some say it was wine writer Bert Anderson while others say it was master of wine Nicolas Belfrage. What is clear though is that the terms stuck and that the wines improved the quality and perception of Italian wines overall. Some believe that these wines have added to the internationalization of wine and that Italians should stick to their own grape varieties. However, DOCs have been created and wine laws have been changed in order to incorporate Super Tuscans into the official classification as some of them are amongst the best and most expensive wines out of Italy. I will taste three of the most iconic Super Tuscans, so to paraphrase the Black Eyed Peas, I got a feeling that today's going to be a good, good tasting. <laughs> I'm starting with the 2018 Tenuta Luce Lucente, a Tuscany IGT from the village of Montalcino. Montalcino is most famous for the Brunello di Montalcino, which was first championed by the Biondi Santi winery, but it remained an exotic small production wine until the 20th century. In the middle of the 20th century, it became more popular and more famous, which attracted new wineries, and one of them was Tenuta. Nuta Luce. It was founded by two of the most influential winemaking dynasties ever, the Mondavi family and the Frescobaldis, who joined forces and started this winery in 1995 and named it Luce Light. The Frescobaldis have a 700-year-old history in winemaking in Italy, and they also own another super Tuscan producer called Ornelaia. This wine is actually the second wine. They also have the Luce, which is the first wine, and this is a cuvee of Merlot and Sangiovese, and and weirdly, they have like all of the detailed information on pH level and acidity levels of the Merlot and the Sangiovese, but I didn't really find clear information on how the cuvee is composed. So I don't know whether there's more Merlot or more Sangiovese in there, but well, let's just taste it. The wine was fermented in stainless steel and it was aged in new and old barriques. And it's pretty, pretty dark. You can see that the wine is pretty dark and dense. Montalcino is well known for structured, intense Sangiovese based wines that can age for a long time. Merlot doesn't really play a role in the traditional Brunello di Montalcino, but this is actually quite delicious. On the nose, there's quite a lot of cherry flavor, intense plum flavors coming through. There's also quite a lot of oak spice that I can sense. On the palate, this is a little less profound than on the nose, a little less intense. The tannins are a little bit dry, slightly acidic on the finish, but there's also good body here. I mean, this is close to 15% of alcohol, 14 and a half. It's a pretty good wine. Luce is not the most famous Super Tuscan wine, even though the history is actually quite interesting. The Lucente is pretty reasonably priced and it delivers quite a lot of flavor. I'm going to rate this 91 points. I think it's it's a delicious wine. It's actually still fairly young. It can age a few more years and it's fun. It's pretty good. The next wine is one of the most famous Italian wines. It's one of the OG Super Tuscans. It's the 2001 Tignanello from Antinori. Interestingly, Piero Antinori also credits Robert Mondavi for changing his perspective on wine. He traveled to the US to meet Robert Mondavi and was really inspired by his vision 
for wine, for the wine business and for the future of his winery. Piero became a bit of a renegade when he decided to take this wine out of the official classification system. He insisted on not using white grapes in the blend and added international grape varieties in order to make the wine more complex. This meant that he could only market this wine as a Vino da Tavola, which was previously reserved for bulk wine and really cheap stuff. But Tinanello became one of the best wines of Italy. The first vintage of Tinanello was 1971, so more than 50 years ago. And this is actually the 30th anniversary bottling. So it's now 22 years old and I hope it's going to be nice. This is a blend of 85% Sangiovese, 10% Cabernet Sauvignon and 5% Cabernet Franc. And I'm not sure yet whether I need to decant this. I'm going to taste it first. The grapes for this wine come from the Cinanello Vineyard, which is roughly 60 hectares big. So this is not a small scale production. I don't really know how many bottles there are, but I'm guessing there are quite a few in circulation. The fermentation takes place in wooden fermenters and the wine is aged for more than one year in barriques. The cork looks pretty nice and you can see that it's the real deal. But now let's taste it. I think I'm not going to decant it. I think I will let it develop in the glass, but it is quite delicious. It smells of cherries, but also a little bit of blackberries, but there's also quite a bit of tertiary flavors coming through now. So there's a little bit of leatheriness. There's a little bit of spice. It's pretty complex and quite beautiful. I mean, you can also see the evolution in the color, which is slightly turning garnet, but it's not, I mean, it's not old. It's not past its peak. I think it's really in its drinking window right now. On the palate, you can feel the grip, the structure, good freshness, very beautiful length. It is a really well aged, pretty complete and quite exciting wine. I do like this quite a bit. I think Tianello often has a bad rap because, well, you can get it in lots of different places. Um, but I think this is a really profound and interesting and complex wine. Nevertheless, it's not the best Tinanello that I've ever tasted. I'm going to rate this 94 points. I really enjoy it. It's really beautiful, but it's not quite up there. The last one is one of the absolute classics of the Italian wine scene, the 2004 Tenuta San Guido Sassicaia from Bulgari. For a very long time, Tuscan winemaking was Chianti and the areas closer to the sea were not really considered to be suitable for the production of grapes. They were doing other agriculture and farming in Bulgari, but they were not producing world-class wines. But that changed in the 20th century. Mario and Cisa della Rocchetta decided to plant Bordeaux varietals in the region in order to make a wine similar to his favorite wines from Bordeaux. And the wine was a Vino da Tavola, was not really considered to be anything special, but it definitely left a mark in blind tasting and over time became one of the most iconic wines from Italy. It played a very important role in putting the region of Bulgari as a DOC on the map and it even got its own DOC, Bulgari Sassicaia, which is unique amongst DOCs in Italy. Of course, today there are other producers making wine in Bulgari, but Sassicaia remains special. The 2004 vintage was a cuvee of 85% of Cabernet Sauvignon and 15% of Cabernet Franc and it was aged in barriques for 24 months. So I'm again cutting off the whole capsule because I might be decanting this wine. And in that case, it always helps when the whole capsule is off because it's easier to spot the sediment. The cork looks a little bit moldy, but that usually isn't a problem. As long as I can pull it out in one piece, I'm happy. <coughs> I think this is beautiful, but I'm going to decant it in order to make sure that it opens up a bit more. So first of all, I like to rinse out the carafe to make sure that there's no, well, no bad odors in there. Everything gets washed out, even though you should always clean your carafes properly with water, not with soap. That's the worst idea. So let's pour. Glass is so thick. I can hardly see anything, but now, well, now it's, now it's better. So you want to stop as soon as you see 
the sediment coming because well you don't really want to eat that this is delicious this is a step up from the previous two wines in my opinion it is very delicate and very elegant it's not like super concentrated fruit flavors it's more like uh, red currants a little bit of black currants also there's blackberry flavors there's a little bit of spice there's a little bit of cedar wood there's quite a lot of flavors going on there's even a little bit of mint here so it's complex and elegant on the palate it's just super fresh the tannins are round but present there's lots of liveliness in the finish this is not a heavy wine 13.5 percent of alcohol and everything is in very good balance i'd love to have a beautiful steak a bistecca fiorentina now together with this wine that would be just perfect in order for the wine to be perfect i'd like to have a little bit more concentration and depth but this is beautiful. I'm going to rate it 95 points. I think it's in its drinking window, but it's still young and fresh and it's a beauty. This tasting proved to me that Super Tuscans have a place in the wine world. All three wines were really good. The Sassicaia was the best of them all, but the Lucente was really good at that price point. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I really enjoyed myself in this tasting. It was a bit of a crazy lineup, but Hey, so thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what do you think about Super Tuscans? Do you like them or not? Let me know down below. <sighs> I hope I see you guys again soon. I'm going to enjoy these three bottles of wine and you stay thirsty.